So good afternoon and welcome to our presentation. Serge is computer scientist and chief of the Cactus Research Team at UNS Lyon. And I'm an intellectual historian and associate member at the same institution. Today, we will present first results of our collaboration exploring the dialogue between computational linguistics and intellectual history. So during the elaboration of his political theory, the philosopher Thomas Hobbes developed a close relationship with the Bible. However, we lack a systematic study and understanding of his use of the scriptures due to the difficulties of a manual analysis of Hobbes' numerous and inconsistent biblical quotations. Our project relies on two main biblical hypotheses. The first one, it is possible to build a computational model of Hobbes' Bible. Second one, this model can philologically ground historical interpretation on Hobbes' use of a sacred text. The textometric approach combines powerful statistical text analysis tools with the philological need for a rigorous establishment of texts. So we deploy textometry and TEXAM to elaborate and exploit a machine-readable model of Hobbes' Bible in the English political works, that is to say, the elements of law, philosophical rudiments, and Leviathan. We expect to answer questions like, what's Hobbes' use of the Bible over time? What were his main biblical sources? And to what end, finally, did he make such quotations? The presentation is structured as follows. So the first part illustrates the foundations of our method through the building of the TXM-based corpus of Hobbes' English political works. The second part introduces the modeling and exploiting of the diplomatic Bible. The third part presents the modeling and exploiting of the critical Bible. And finally, the conclusion makes a first assessment and prepares some future developments. So <clears throat> the first step of our workflow was to build a digital corpus of a Hobbes political works. Uh, the source of the corpus are Ibo TCB transcriptions, which were encoded in TI and converted in TIP5 by our chairman of today. Thank you for that. And uh, of uh, facsimile images uh, digitized by his partner libraries, uh, of links between transcription pages and those images encoded in page break elements that we have uh, encoded uh, in the TI, and of course the TSM platform. A first result is an edition for each work, which uh, is we call synoptic editions because on the left you have a rendering of a transcription page by page which tries to imitate uh, the source book. And on the right, you have a facsimile image to be able to verify at any time if you have any errors in the transcriptions. Uh, to cope with uh, early modern English writing heterogeneity, variation, we limitize the text with Morph Adorna, uh, which is a software designed uh, in a Northwestern University. Uh, and a very nice feature of Morph Adorna is that it takes TI encoded text and gives you back TI encoded text. So it's sufficiently rare to, to notate that. And it's very nice for us because it allows us to <coughs> integrate Morph Adana work in TXM very simply. We also refined uh, some uh, TI encodings. And uh, finally, you get a uh, digital corpus, which is instrumented by all the tools available in the TXM platform. Uh, to give you an example of a final TI encoding, we get imported into the platform. Here is an example showing you the very dense encoding at the world level of uh, XML. And to give you an idea of what is available as an uh, instrumentation for that uh, platform, here is a typical screenshot of a session, work session, working session. On the very, very left, uh, you have uh, what we call 
here. A uh, hierarchical index of uh, lemmas of substantive of a corpus sorted by their frequency. Uh, this is a very simple quantitative tool uh, which gives you a very nice heuristic of a specific word related to the thematic content of your corpus. So the first words in your list are the most dealt with in that corpus. Then should you be interested in the sovereign word which is here, you can even focus your interest in the sovereign word followed immediately by a verb uh, with a specific query, which is in that hierarchic, new hierarchical index here. And if you are interested in the first match, uh, the first element in that list, sovereign is, you can build its concordance by a simple double click. So the quick concordance gives you a reading very precise of your uh, big RAM. And if you need more context, you can double click on any line and get to the edition in which you we highlight the occurrence in pink. Okay? So <clears throat> instrumentation in TXM is a way to re interrelate different analytical level levels very easily from quantitative measures, even without any probabilistic model, to close reading here with various intermediates, intermediary tools. The second step of our workflow was to begin to build the diplomatic, uh, diplomatic uh, Bible of Hope, sorry. And uh, it's based on the explicit reference of verses made by Hobbes in his works. A uh, typical reference is made of a book name, a chapter number, and a verse number. But you have also different expressions of that with only the verse or only the books. For example, um, the verse 5 here, example, is a reference to verse 5 of a specific book and chapter, which is probably written before in the work. The Act 8, 36, 37 is an explicit reference to two different verses. It's a composite reference. And finally, the Act 16, 30 is a typical canonical reference. It's a, a reference to a unique verse. So to cope with all the diversity of uh, surface representation of references, single or composite, uh, we designed a search query in the CQP, uh, of the CQ, CQL, sorry, uh, uh, query language, uh, which is integrated into uh, the TXM platform. And that query looks for a sequence of words. Uh, and we have colored the different words and colored in the query, alternately by red and green, to help you read the sequence. It's not actually very readable, but for example, <coughs> The first word in green, in red, sorry, uh, uh, <coughs> expresses the possibility to have a number of a book just before the name of a book, like in 1 John. As you can see in that concordance of that exact query, uh, we have 838 batches of it in the corpus, and you can see in the pivot column a different realization of a query. <clears throat> so to begin to build the biblical, diplomatic biblical model, we designed a script to interpret those sequences and analyze it to build annotation triplets of book, chapter, and number. Uh, <clears throat> so the first script automatically builds new annotations of the different matches and associate to them the triples. And then we have a manual work to cope with the silence of a, of a query, which doesn't get any figure. There are some results that are not matched. Uh, that's the silence. Is, we have also to, co to correct the noise of a query because uh, it can catch some stuff which is not uh, biblical references. And also to uh, encode some information that the script cannot calculate in the, in the 
sequences. So this work has been done, will, we, will be explained by uh, Francesca next. <coughs> so, um, as a, the result of a script, you get uh, annotation associated to each match, which are green here. So every green sequence is an annotation of a triplet. And the dark green verse two, it's not very dark here, but it's more dark on the screen, is uh, the current annotation which is displayed in the lower part here window of a display. So the result of a script is that your edition has been equipped by annotations and you get a view here of your annotations. And this is the view of the current annotation here. And you see that the reference triplet is encoded with book one John, chapter four, and verse two fields. As you can see, in the surface you only have verse two. So the book one John and chapter four have been filled in by the script thanks to the previous one John four one reference just before. So you see, uh, we calculate some information from what we have already seen in the annotations. But uh, the part of a Bible of a reference has been encoded automatically by another script later. So, and here is where the manual part of it comes. This screenshot shows a part of a query result verification method. So to reduce the noise produced by our query, we need to manually correct the automatic annotation of the URS units. Here, the biblical reference unit act 12, underlined in green, is manually deleted once shown as false by its contextualization through the synoptic edition. We see actually here that in the end, it's not a real biblical reference, but actually a sort of a description of the contents of a chapter. The final obstacle we need to overcome in order to create this diplomatic model of the Bible is the association of the biblical references with their respective quotations. Many of Hobbes' references introduce biblical passages in italics, However, the string of character composing them needs to be turned into a computable object in order for TXM to manipulate them as such. That is why we have defined the textual boundaries of each citation through manual annotation via the URS annotation module. So here we see that the pacing that mouse cursor on the first and the last word of the quotation, it is possible to show the number of this word. Thank you. And so, uh, it, after copying the values in the start word and end word fields, we have launched another script to extract each string of characters identified by these numbers. We see the two fields. So let's now turn to some examples of exploitation of Hobbes' diplomatic Bible. Here we see a dynamic index of the biblical references annotations occurring in the human nature and the corpore political subcarpus. Two sets of hyperlinks here in blue allow to navigate to respectively the diplomatic and the critical edition page of occurrence of each index entry. It is also possible to calculate the dimension of the cited biblical books to get some insights into Hobbes' use of the Bible. Here we see indeed that in this subcarpus, the most quoted book, biblical book is Matthew, so the Gospel of Matthew. We also can see easily that the New Testament is more quoted than the Old Testament, and that if we refer to the book composing the Old Testament, it is numbers who is quoted the most. Finally, it's also possible to list the passages introduced by Hobbes' references. The screenshot shows actually the result of extraction of the human nature and the corpore politico uh, references and quotations in the order of appearance in Hobbes' texts. 
So we come to the third part. This part tackles a completely new challenge. Hobbes' biblical references are sometimes omitted, incomplete, or even erroneous. As a result, a diplomatic model of the Bible is insufficient in itself for a comprehensive view of Hobbes' use of the scripture. To overcome this difficulty, we have adapted our workflow to model, annotate, and operationalize the micro-interpretations provided by the main modern critical editors of Hobbes' works in order to correct Hobbes' inaccuracies. As the critical model of the Bible is still under construction, what we now show you is work in progress. So, first, we need to manually integrate the editorial notes adding Hobbes' omitted references. What we see here is a, a passage of Noel Malcolm's uh, critical edition of Leviathan as we can access it from the database Oxford Scholarly Editions Online. We see here a paragraph where Hobbes indeed quotes different passages without a reference. And Malcolm provides them in the editorial notes on the right. So, to encode these micro-interpretations, we resorted again to the URS annotation module, and we added a new biblical reference annotation property called critical note, or C note, up there. Then, we inserted the property value misref in order to indicate that it's a missing reference, and uh, finally, we manually filled in all the other property fields in order to uh, actually indicate uh, what kind of complete reference it would like. We added as many URS units as the missing references by conventionally anchoring them to the first word of every quotation. Secondly, uh, we need to integrate editorial notes presenting Hobbes' incomplete references. Again, we see uh, the text from uh, Malcolm's Leviathan, and here corrects, indeed, on the right, the editorial note, uh, Hobbes' reference. So it, the correct one, there is 1 John 4, not just verse 1, but also verse 2. So what we did, again, it was to introduce a new property value, missing this, in the critical note property field, and then we manually filled in all the other fields in order to have the complete reference. Thirdly, we also needed to integrate the editorial note correcting Hobbes' erroneous references. In this example that is taken from Warrender's edition of uh, Philosophical Rudiments, the correct reference is Ezekiel 34, verse 23 and 25, as we can see on the left, and not, as written by Hobbes, Ezekiel 24, verse 2, 3, and 25. So again, to integrate this information and uh, our model, we introduced a new value, this time erroneous reference on the right, in the critical note property field, and then again we filled in all the uh, remaining information in order to have the correct reference. So let's now turn to some manipulation ideas of Hobbes' critical Bible. Once complete, uh, this model will allow us to create a critical index of Hobbes' explicit quotations, but also um, carry out uh, more accurate analysis on Hobbes' citations. And finally, it will allow us to calculate the editorial delta. That is to say, the variation between the diplomatic and the critical information encoded into the text, but also between the editor's work and our own editorial interventions. So, um, and so we have seen this. And we come to the conclusion. To sum up, we have shown uh, the three-step process of construction of a machine-readable model of Hobbes' Bible. 
First one, we have built the TXM-based corpus of OPSIS English political works, which served as the foundations of our method. Then we have turned had this explicit citation into computable data in order to exploit them. And then we turned also the editorial micro interpretations uh, of the critical editor into computable data in order to further um, carry on more accurate analysis. So we, show to, we hope to have shown that thanks to the digital in, uh, annotation through TEXAM, philology can become the vector of a computer-assisted hermeneutics whose procedures and results, made fully explicit, can be shared, replicated, and verified. The textometric approach can therefore renew the humanist historical critical tradition in the service of open science. Thank you very much for your attention. We will be happy to answer your questions.